All right, all right, Red Nation. Today we're going to be talking about induction and transformers for your x-ray circuit here at How Radiology Works. Coming up now, why do you care about induction and transformers? Namely, you could not have an x-ray circuit without transformers. You need to be able to take the voltages that we get at the wall and significantly increase that voltage in order to produce x-rays using our x-ray tube. First off, how does induction work? What happens if you take a magnet, say I take a bar magnet and I move it by a wire loop, just a loop of wire. If the magnet's sitting there stationary next to that loop of wire, nothing's gonna happen. But if I take that magnet and I move it relative to the wire, what's actually happening is a change in the magnetic field actually will induce a current. That's where the word induction comes from. The change in the magnetic field will induce a current in that wire. Likewise, if you take a change in the current within a loop, you can induce a magnetic field. They go hand in hand. A change in the magnetic field can induce a current and a change in the current can induce a magnetic field. That's how you make an electromagnet, right? If you actually take loops of wire that are coiled and you change the current through them, that can make an electromagnet. Instead of bringing a regular bar magnet up to this wire loop, what if we bring an electromagnet up to the wire loop? If the field is changing in that electromagnet, so it's getting less intense and then it's getting more intense, so nothing's physically moving, but still the field strength is changing and that change in the field strength, that can induce a current in your wire loop. Any change of the magnetic field can induce a current in the wire loop. So far, what I've talked about is actually just having a wire loop and then having the air actually mediate this interaction between your magnetic field and your actual wires. That's actually not the greatest thing to mediate this interaction. Actually having something that can be magnetic itself, a ferromagnetic material, that's gonna work even better. So if you take an iron core, we will have a wire loop. We'll have an oscillating current coming in that will induce a magnetic field because of the change in that current loop. That magnetic field then will be picked up inside of this iron core. Then that magnetic field, because there's a change in the magnetic field, that change in the magnetic field will actually go to a current in the loop on the other side. This is what we call the primary is the input and then the secondary is the output. By changing the ratio, the number of coils we have on each side, we can actually change what the signal is gonna look like in terms of the voltage and in terms of the current. What we care a lot about on our X-ray circuit is we want to be able to pull electrons across, hit them hard into a heavy metal, and we need tens of thousands of volts in order to do that. If we take the regular power at the wall, we actually wanna increase the voltage significantly in order to have enough voltage to pull those electrons across hard and generate X-rays. We need what we call a step up transformer where we're gonna go from a lower voltage to a higher voltage. So in order to do that, we actually wanna have more turns on the output here for a step up transformer. Likewise, using the same methodology, we can have a step down transformer where you have more turns on the input and then you have less turns on the output. In our X-ray circuit, we're gonna talk about why we want to do that on the filament or heating circuit because we actually want a lower voltage there we want a high current or high amps on that circuit. So that's where we want a step down transformer. And the change in the voltage is actually just gonna go like the ratio of the number of primary turns to the number of secondary turns. There's one more type of transformer we wanna talk about that's called the auto transformer or self transformer. Auto just comes from the Greek being self. And the idea here is if you take one long coil loop and then you change actually the places where you do the taps, you can achieve the same transformation of step up or step down. These are used within our x-ray circuits. Again, you can think of having the different points, a point A, a point in the middle, and a point at the other end. And then depending on where you move this point in the middle, up and down your coil loop, 
you actually will change the relative number of primary turns versus number of secondary turns. And same logic applies where you can have step up or step down transformers, depending on where you place the taps. You can also have variable auto transformers, which allow you to move where you place the taps on these current loops so that you can change the relative step up or step down transformation that you want this transformer to do. You've really got transformers nailed down. See our full video about the X-ray circuit so you can understand that well as far as how do these transformers fit in within the X-ray circuit having the three components of the primary, secondary, and filament heating circuits within our X-ray circuit. Coming up here.